the Lord just laid on my heart. Hmm, gave me some ideas based on last week. We're in a series called Real, Living a Life of Transparency, looking at the Apostle Peter. He's the one who denied the Lord. He's the one that was a hothead. He's the one that cut the guy's ear off. He's the one that slept when he should have been praying. Always stuck his foot in the mouth. But, you know, he's also the one that walked on water. Amen? And he was a real kind of guy. And I think God put him in the Scripture because he was a real person, but also so that you and I would have somebody we could really relate to. Amen? And uh, Peter became a success. That's my goal for you. That's God's goal for you and for my life is to be a success Not so much maybe in what the world would see as success, but it's what he sees as success. A successful man or woman, boy or girl, for his kingdom. So you can't do that if you're phony. Can't do that if you're not real. It just ain't happening. God doesn't need you. You hear me? Doesn't need me if we're going to be full of bull. Amen? Just doesn't need us. God of heaven needs me. No, he don't. He can use me. If I'll humble myself, then he'll lift me up. Amen? Amen? He'll work inside of me. So we're in a series right now called Real. Let's go with it, Rog. We're going to put it in some warp speed. We're going to try today anyway. But we didn't want to cut it short on the Browns too much. Amen? Man, I can't do that because we need a blessing, and we got it today. Our verse last week that we honed in on, one of many, was Acts 4.13. It says, Now when they saw, they being the religious leaders, the ones who actually had Jesus Christ killed, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. (laughs) They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And we saw in this verse last week that Peter was a real idiot. He was, say that with me, Peter was a real idiot. And the deal is, I want to be one too. That's what that verse means. When it says, The religious leaders, they were basically putting them on trial in front of them for healing a lame man. They thought they'd got rid of all this stuff. We killed the leader. It's all over. It's gone. No, it ain't. And it still ain't gone. Amen? And so anyway, they brought Peter and John before them and put them on some kind of trial right there in front of them. But they noticed something about these boys. (laughs) They couldn't believe it. The boldness they had. They could not believe that out of these bold men... They noticed something else. They were unlearned and ignorant. In the original translated language of the Greek, the word is idiotos, which means idiots. (laughs) They looked at him and said, how could this be? These guys are idiots. And they marveled at the way they had their power and their testimony, and they couldn't believe it, and they noticed that these men had been with Jesus. And that's why I say I want to be a real idiot. I want people to marvel at my life. Not because of Gary Clark, but because of Jesus Christ inside of me. That's what I want. And so if it means being a real idiot, count me in, baby. That's what I want. So let's look at this. How did Peter become this real idiot? Here's some things that he had inside of him. A quick review. He had a free and fearless confidence. I want that. He had an uninhibited and unreserved manner when it came to sharing the gospel and living for Jesus Christ. He was not afraid. I want that. He caused even the religious elite The fancy folk, religious folk, to marvel at him. I want that. And then he did this. He lived his life in such a manner that people knew, hallelujah, he had been with Jesus. That's what I want in my life. Well, how did he do it? How did Peter get to real idiot status? All right? We laid down some things for you last week. And just a quick review real fast. He got up. When he had denied the Lord, he saw the Lord again, but he went back to his boat. He went back fishing. But when he saw Jesus on the shore... He was out there fishing. He was naked as a jaybird. That's what the Bible says. That's how the man was fishing. That's crazy. But anyway, uh, and when he saw Jesus, someone said, it's the Lord. He jumped in the water. He took his chance, amen, to get back in the game, to get back in the race. Maybe that's where you're at today. It's your chance to get back on on, on Jesus' side. If you've never come to his side, it's your chance to make that move today. Hallelujah. He got up. He did this by himself. What does that mean? That means it was his choice. It was his decision. You have to make that decision yourself. The second thing we saw last week is that he stood up. He stood up. As you follow Peter's life on through the book of Acts, early in the book of Acts, you see that, that he stood with believers. He stood with the disciples. He stood up and started talking in a room that was filled with 120 And we call that his community. We call it today the what? The church. The church. You need us, we need you. If you're going to be a strong Christian for Jesus Christ, I've seen a lot of people out there that don't go to church, but boy, they're so super spiritual, and most of them are nuts. Most of them are quacky, weird. 
We're here to help you not be so weird. Amen? I'm telling you, people that just, oh, I never go to church. I don't need church, but I got all the answers from Jesus. Uh Uh-huh, sure you do. You need to be in church. You need to be fellowshipping. Why, preacher man? Because that's Jesus Christ's plan. We don't work our tail off to do this every week just so that we can have some fun. It's the command of God. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Especially as you see His coming approaching and getting nearer, we should be more focused on the church and coming together and serving and working and encouraging one another. Amen? Peter did that. He stood up. Look at the third thing that he did. He spoke up. He spoke up, and he did that before unbelievers. And we looked at this last week. This is Jesus' commission that you go into all the world and preach the gospel and you share your testimony. I'm not talking about shove it down people's throat, but if we're going to reach people for Christ, we've got to speak up. Amen? We've got to get out of here. We've got to go out there in our world and tell them that Jesus loves us, loves you, and tell them about how he loved you and how you came to Christ. Give them something real they can chew on. Amen? And then the fourth thing, he gave up. We saw the lame man at the gate beautiful last week. And as Peter and John were passing by, the lame man asked for alms, alms, alms. And Peter said, silver and gold, have I not? But such as I have, I'll give to you. He said, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen? And that's why they were on this little trial now. They were having this trial before the religious leaders because Peter gave what he had. Amen? And this is how you can become a real idiot. Those are four things that will help you become a real idiot. Amen? Get up. Stand up. Speak up. Give up. You want people to start thinking you're crazy? Start giving to God's work. Start giving to needy people. If you got a car and you know somebody that's, that's really hurting, give them your car. People are going to think you're crazy. Jesus will probably say, that's pretty cool. Amen? Glad you did that. Start giving like that. But let's go somewhere. We're moving now forward. You can have all this and still not have the real idiot thing happening. Amen? You can have these four things happening in your life and you still haven't got to idiot hood yet. Amen? (laughs) We need to get you there. And we didn't finish last week and we're tying it in with what we're saying today. You must have the fire. Say that with me. You must have fire. The fire. Come on, some of you, I don't believe you got it. Come on, say it again. You must have the fire. You can do those four things all day long. Get up, come to church, even talk to other people about Jesus. You can even give stuff away. But if you don't have the fire of God, friend, you ain't arrived. Amen? Without the fire, you're just a false alarm. Please exit the building. Please exit the building. Stupid alarm. You ever think God thinks that of us? When we leave and we go out of here, and boy, we were at church, we're real spiritual, and I think God's hearing, there's another false alarm. They don't really have the fire. All right? We need to fire. Keep looking. Peter was filled up. That's the fifth thing. He got up. He stood up. He spoke up. He gave up. He was filled up. Filled up with what? Pop it up there. He was filled with fire. What kind of fire? The fire from the comforter, Jesus said. The Holy Spirit of the living God. He had the fire in him. And see, that's what made Peter the man he was. Did Peter still have warts and wrinkles? Sure he did. He was real. But he learned. He learned it wasn't his sword. Amen? He learned that it wasn't his own natural leadership abilities that he had. He learned from from the Holy Spirit of the living God that he could do this thing. Jesus said, hey, Peter. Peter, you're the leader, man. You're going to be the rock, baby. It's going to happen. And Peter tried in his own strength and failed miserably. But when he received the Holy Spirit of God in his life, he was on fire for the Lord. He was filled up. John the Baptist said it was going to be like this. Hang in here with me. Matthew 3.11. I indeed baptize you with water, John the Baptist said, under repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I am, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to bear. He shall baptize you, say it with me, with the Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. Now look at what Jesus said. Here's what Jesus said. John 14, Jesus was going to be leaving his disciples. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. He said, if if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again. And so he had to leave them with some encouraging words. And here, he could have been more encouraging than this. Look at it. I will pray the Father, Jesus said to his disciples, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. Say it with me. For... 
ever. Verse 17, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees Him not, neither knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you. He shall be in you. Verse 18, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll come unto you. Acts 1.8, the last verses that Jesus ever uh, spoke and, and the, the words that he ever spoke that's recorded in the Bible, Acts 1 8, before he ascended to seat at the right hand of uh, sit at the right hand of God the Father, he said this to his disciples, You shall receive what? Say it with me. Power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now look at Peter. Peter got it. Acts 4 8. He got it. Look at it. Say it with me. Then Peter, say it with me. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Amen? He was filled with the Spirit of God. And if you're not filled with the Spirit of God, if you don't have the power of the Spirit of God in your life, then you know what you are. You're just an alarm. Ank, ank, ank. Please exit the building. If we're going to reach people for Christ, if we're going to make a difference in our world, we need other than just false alarms going off. Amen? Let's keep looking. You can have the alarm going off all day, but if you don't have the fire, say it with me, then you ain't on fire. A lot of people think they're on fire. They ain't on fire. We're going to talk about it this morning. Keep looking. A lot of church people today think they're on fire, but they ain't. Okay, I've seen it. This is what I've given my life to do. Been many times when the preacher won't on fire either. I was going through the motions. It's my job. This is what I do. Many times I did that, didn't even know I was doing it. It's what I do. I got in a pattern. Got to walk in this way. I tell you what, God wants to empower you. And he'll use crazy people to empower because he's using me. Amen? <laughs> so listen, all of you qualify. Amen? Get in line. If you're not on fire, it's just a bunch of bells and whistles. 